All right, so going into the 2021 season, Ohio State is going to have huge expectations. Ohio State kind of filled their goal of going to the of not only winning the Big Ten uh, and going to the playoffs, finally getting over that Clemson hump and getting and of course getting their revenge against them, but also making it to the national title. Now, of course, if you're an Ohio State fan, the expectation is to win a national championship. That's that's the expectation every single year. It doesn't matter if it's Urban Meyer or Ryan Day. That is always the expectation. And obviously, 2020, you know, they it's 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 tough to be disappointed because, you, you know, you went through, you know, the COVID situation. You played seven games uh, before the Alabama game. You went seven and one. You played, what, four or five games in the Big Ten. It was rough. And then obviously with, you know, these guys weren't even healthy going into the national championship and even all season long. Um, so obviously it's tough for them to kind of be disappointed as far as Ohio State fans. But I would say 2020 was the game was more of a kind of a build up year. Maybe they exceeded expectations. But then going into 2021, maybe this could be a year where Ohio State, the again, the expectations are going to be there. But obviously with this time, you got spring ball. You're going to be playing. Well, we expect it to be a full season for them. Is This is going to be a, a much easier season for them. Um, I would definitely say I was, you know, compared to how they compared to how it was last year, um, only because, again, you got fall camp, there's spring. I mean, you know, so it, it, the point is that they got more time. And with a lot of talent coming back and a lot of talent that's coming in, we can expect this Ohio State football team to be just as dominant or just as good as they were last year or the year before that and potentially once again compete for a national title. So going you know going over some of the positions that they're going to be absolutely loaded in uh running back you know the running back position is going to be one of those positions where they're talented uh master t is a very talented back he's very very experienced um he's more of a he's more of that old school type of back he, you know he's, he's not the shiftiest guy um but he's very very strong very very tough not going to go out, you know, down after first contact um again you bring in a five star in trayvon henderson who was the number one running back in the country uh, we will see if Trayvon Henderson can potentially take that J.K. Dobbins step where, again, you know, J.K. Dobbins coming out of Orange County, Texas. He was the guy immediately from day one. Maybe Trayvon Henderson can be that guy. If not, they still got, a, I believe, a, a reliable running back. Maybe not better than Trey Sermon or J.K. Dobbins, but a reliable running back. And obviously uh, with Master Teague. Um, you look at the quarterback position. This is going to be one of the positions where we're, we'll see, right? Is it going to be Kyle McCord? Uh, is it going to be, you know, uh, is it going to be uh, Shroud, right? Is, is, is it going to be him? Is it going to be Shroud? Uh, you know, obviously with CJ and um, with, 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 with Kyle McCord, that's probably going to be the battle for who's going to be the man. Um, you know, Stroud is, is, is the favorite to win the quarterback position. Again, this is a former Elite 11 quarterback winner. Um, a guy with a lot of talent, a lot of a lot of uh, potential, a lot of upside. He was the second string quarterback right behind Justin Fields. Um, you know, this is going to be tough because Justin Fields might have been the best quarterback as far as talent that they've ever had, and they really couldn't get it done there. And obviously, with you know, obviously with you know a guy that you know barely has any experience at the, at those positions, you know, obviously with Ryan Day coaching coaching up him, coaching him up, uh, you know, obviously they're you know you would expect Ohio State to be fine, especially with the talent that I'm going to be talking about the receiving positions. However. There are some questions about, you know, whoever is going to be the guy, are they going to be better than Justin Fields? You know, are they going to be any better than what Justin Fields was the last couple of years that he's been there? We're going to find out. Look at those receiving positions. And this is the reason why I think maybe fans are probably not going to be worried about the quarterback, whoever wins the quarterback position battle at all, because the receiving position, it's the deepest in the country. Is it better than Alabama back in 2018, 2019? Probably not, but it's super, super deep, right? Uh, you bring back Chris Olave, which is a shock to me. Uh, you bring, you know, you, you bring in a five star in Amika Ubuke. I'm, I forget, I'm not going to pronounce his name, but you bring Amika in. That is a, that's really, really amazing there. You bring, you know, Garrett Wilson is back, right? Uh, you bring in Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, just tons and tons of talent. And then Julian Fleming, who was the number one receiver back in the 2020 recruiting class. Obviously, you expect him to play a more pivotal role to this offense. So Ohio State is absolutely loaded at those receiving positions. There's probably some more names that I just forgot about, but they are absolutely loaded 
at the receiving position from the Z, from the X to the slot positions. They are absolutely loaded. The tight end position, they bring back record back. That is a big win for the Ohio State Buckeyes. You look at the offensive line, bringing back guys like Diner and Mudford and Nicholas Piet-Pierre and, and Harry Miller and bringing those guys back. The offensive line is extremely talented, You know, tons of five and four star talent and a lot of experience. I think they bring back four out of their five starters from the offensive line. Wyatt Davis is a big loss, but Ohio State should be absolutely dominant at that particular offensive line group. Defensively, uh, you know, you know, Haskell Garrett, you know, really, really good, really, really good guy that can plug up the run, put some, you know, establish some pressure on the quarterback in the interior. You would expect him to get better there. You look at the outside, Tyreek Smith, you want, you know, can Tyreek Smith break that mold? Because Tyreek Smith has been knocking at the door for like, you know, he's been knocking at the door of elite status. Can he break through it? The same thing can be said about Smith as well. Smith is Harrison Smith, extremely talented player. You know that he has that potential to be that next guy. He's just got to kind of break that window. You, you know, Jack Sawyer, uh, the best defensive, the best wide defensive end in the country, the best four three defensive end in the country. You know, we'll, you know, again, can he make a Nick Bosa, Chase Young impact? We'll find out about that. So, you know, they're loaded. I mean, Ohio State is absolutely loaded at the defensive line, at the interior positions and the outside and the defensive line positions. Uh, tons of death, tons of incoming talent that I can definitely see get a lot of playing time, but a lot of experience in those positions. Linebacking position is, is interesting, talented, but very interesting to see, right? Uh, Baron Browning, uh, you lose Borland and Warner. Those guys are gone. And now you have, you know, some other guys that are more that, that are more known as rotational players, you know, those guys are going to have to step up and 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 really be those and really be those players. Now the good thing is a lot of those guys in those positions and I'm forgetting the names, maybe you guys can correct me in the comic session. They do have a lot of experience, but they really had to wait their turn behind those guys for 3 years, like 2 or 3 years. So they're finally getting their turns at the dinner table. We'll see if they can kind of fill out because again, Borland, Warner, um and Browning, three very very critical players to that defense. So I'm very excited to see what you know those linebackers can do. Again, tons of talent, but obviously we will find out if you know they can kind of fill in the mold. The secondary is going to, is still going to be a question mark, right? Last year I felt like the secondary was the biggest kind of concern for me. Um, I had a you know moving Sean Wade, who's more of a nickel corner, more of a nickel hybrid safety guy. That moving him to outside corner, it was just not going to work out. Now he made some plays here and there, made some flashy plays, but overall wise, Sean Wade is a nickel guy. He's a nickel, you know, playmaking, you know, type of corner. He is not a outside corner, and they had no, they really had no choice but to put him in outside corner because they really didn't have anybody as far as they got the talent, but they maybe just didn't have the experience or the confidence to put some of the young guys out there. Uh, so obviously Sean Wade, they did it with Sean Wade. It kind of messed up for them. It kind of backfired them, backfired against them, especially. Uh, in the national championship, now he's gone to the NFL and his draft stock is down the toilet. So Seven Banks is expected to be the guy. A lot of upside, a lot of talent, showed some potential, especially in that national championship game. Made some plays against the run, more you know, more of that hard hitter. And of course, yeah, at six one hundred and eighty pounds, you kind of would expect that he has the length, the athleticism, he has all the physical tools you would need him to be in order for. for for Ohio State once again to have maybe that number one shutdown type of corner. You know, obviously at the outside cornerback positions, there are they they gotta find out what they have during the spring. They gotta find out what they have to do uh you know during fall camp. The slot cornerback positions, they got some players there. Um the safety positions, you know, safety positions are not that much of a worry. Josh Proctor is back there. There's Marcus Hooker. So, you know, obviously uh you know Ohio State at the safety positions, that's one area where they're going to be fine in. It's really just the outside cornerback positions, the linebacking positions, and even I would really include the running back position as well. Uh, I'm not too worried about the quarterback position because the quarterback position is, you know, again, all that talent on the outside is the deepest in the country. That is fine. But it's really those three main groups where a lot of talent, but there's a lot of uncertainty. Now, for, again, the running. Now, again, they could go to the transfer portal. I don't know if they can really take in recruits because they got a they had a they had a phenomenal 2021 recruiting class. They finished second in the country. Um, so I don't know if they have the room, but that's kind of what Ohio State did last year. They looked towards a little bit towards the transfer portal. They brought in a guy like Trey Sermon during, during the spring. He ended up being a, a huge, impactful player for them down the road, even though Master Teague was expected to be the next man up. So. We will see what Ohio State does. Ohio State has a has a has a lot of promise, 
looking at their schedule, their you know again that Oregon game, I think will kind of tell where Ohio State's kind of be at going to be at. I think Oregon again had a very very similar start. They played around like four or five games. They weren't even expected to go to the Pac-12 championship. And they were also inexperienced as well. But next year, they should be coming back with a lot of talent. So Ohio State, Oregon, that's the matchup that we're going to get that we should have got last year. But we're going to get this year. And then, of course, you know, looking at the rest of their schedule, you know, obviously it's it's a Big Ten schedule at the end of the day. And we will see if Ohio State can not only win the Big Ten championship again, but potentially go in there to the playoffs and be uh, and, and potentially compete for a national championship.